Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. We are all explorers. Our desire to discover, and then share that newfound knowledge, is part of what makes us human, indeed, this has played an important part in our success as a species. Long before the first caveman slumped down beside the fire and grunted news that there were plenty of wildebeest over yonder, our ancestors had learnt the value of sending out scouts to investigate the unknown. This questing nature of ours undoubtedly helped our species spread around the globe just as it nowadays no doubt helps the last nomadic pennon maintain their existence in the depleted forests of Borneo, and a visitor negotiate the subways of New York. The automotive sector is well used to adapting to automation in manufacturing. The implementation of robotic car manufacture from the 1970s onwards led to significant cost savings, and improvements in the reliability and flexibility of vehicle mass production. A new challenge to vehicle production is now on the horizon and, again, it comes from automation. However, this time it is not to do with the manufacturing process, but with the vehicles themselves. Research projects on vehicle automation are not new. Vehicles with limited self-driving capabilities have been around for more than 50 years, resulting in significant contributions towards driver assistance systems. But since Google announced in 2010 that it had been trialing self-driving cars on the streets of California, progress in this field has quickly gathered pace. The nutmeg tree, Myristica fragrans, is a large evergreen tree native to Southeast Asia. Until the late 18th century, it only grew in one place in the world, a small group of islands in the Banda Sea, part of the Moluccas, or Spice Islands, in northeastern Indonesia. The tree is thickly branched with dense foliage of tough, dark green oval leaves, and produces small, yellow, bell-shaped flowers and pale yellow pear-shaped fruits. The fruit is encased in a flesh husk. When the fruit is ripe, this husk splits into two halves along a ridge running the length of the fruit. Inside is a purple-brown shiny seed. 2 to 3 centimeters long by about 2 centimeters across, surrounded by a lacy red or crimson covering called an arrow. These are the sources of the two spices nutmeg and mace, the former being produced from the dried seed and the latter from the arrow. Artificial intelligence, AI, can already predict the future. Police forces are using it to map when and where crime is likely to occur. Doctors can use it to predict when a patient is most likely to have a heart attack or stroke. Researchers are even trying to give AI imagination so it can plan for unexpected consequences. Many decisions in our lives require a good forecast, and AI is almost always better at forecasting than we are. Yet for all these technological advances, we still seem to deeply lack confidence in AI predictions. Recent cases show that people don't like relying on AI and prefer to trust human experts, even if these experts are wrong. As work in neurosciences indicates, the acquisition of literacy necessitated a new circuit in our species' brain more than 6,000 years ago. That circuit evolved from a very simple mechanism for decoding basic information, like the number of goats in one's herd, to the present, highly elaborated reading brain. My research depicts how the present reading brain enables the development of some of our most important intellectual and effective processes, internalized knowledge, analogical reasoning, and inference perspective taking and empathy, critical analysis, and the generation of insight. Research surfacing in many parts of the world now cautions that each of these essential deep reading processes may be under threat as we move into digital-based modes of reading. The Persians, who lived in present-day Iran, were one of the first civilizations to build tunnels that provided a reliable supply of water to human settlements in dry areas. In the early 1st millennium BCE, they introduced the Kanat method of tunnel construction, 
which consisted of placing posts over a hill in a straight line, to ensure that the tunnel kept to its route, and then digging vertical shafts down into the ground at regular intervals. Underground, workers removed the earth from between the ends of the shafts, creating a tunnel. The excavated soil was taken up to the surface using the shafts, which also provided ventilation during the work. Once the tunnel was completed, it allowed water to flow from the top of a hillside down towards a canal, which supplied water for human use. Remarkably, some canats built by the Persians 2,700 years ago are still in use today. It appears that experimental, situational, and cultural factors are even more powerful in shaping wisdom than previously imagined, says Associate Professor Igor Grossman of the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. Recent empirical findings from cognitive, developmental, social, and personality psychology cumulatively suggest that people's ability to reason wisely varies dramatically across experimental and situational contexts. Understanding the role of such contextual factors offers unique insights into understanding wisdom in daily life, as well as how it can be enhanced and taught. Microbes, most of them bacteria, have populated this planet since long before animal life developed and they will outlive us. Invisible to the naked eye, they are ubiquitous. They inhabit the soil, air, rocks and water and are present within every form of life, from seaweed and coral to dogs and humans. And, as Jung explains in his utterly absorbing and hugely important book We Mess With Them At Our Peril. Every species has its own colony of microbes, called a microbiome. And these microbes vary not only between species, but also between individuals and within different parts of each individual. The cutting of huge figures or geoglyphs into the earth of English hillsides has taken place for more than 3,000 years. There are 56 hill figures scattered around England, with the vast majority on the chalk downlands of the country's southern counties. The figures include giants, horses, crosses and regimental badges. Although the majority of these geoglyphs date within the last 300 years or so, there are one or two that are much older. The most famous of these figures is perhaps also the most mysterious the Uffington White Horse in Oxfordshire. The White Horse has recently been redated and shown to be even older than its previously assigned ancient pre-Roman Iron Age date. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.